कर बैठो तो मैं ये मास्क हटा दू जैसी हितेश भाई ज्वाइन करेंगे कि ही इज टू बिजी विद दैट हिज सन्स वेडिंग का स्टफ ना नो ही इज बिजी आई थिंक आह ही यस्टरडे आल्सो ऑन द मैसेज यू नो ही कुड नॉट गेट कनेक्टेड आई थिंक ही टोल्ड मी छह को जब क्लियर हो जाएगा शादी वादी का देन वी विल देन वी विल हैव अ कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन द इंद्रप्रस थिंग बिकॉज़ दैट डेवलपमेंट इज स्टिल वेटिंग राइट देयर वर चैलेंजेस एट रंजीत जीस प्लेस देयर वर चैलेंजेस विद Uh, this one also uh, trying to get those meetings and all that organized right basically they are wanting the ppt you know to give a brief ppt of what exactly is it 10 pages or something not more than that so we'll discuss after the this uh, so yeah sure sure we have baat ho gaya सिद्धार्थ जी Ah, good to good to see. Siddharth ji is an IIT uh, Kharagpur. Uh, uh, I think uh, which 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 field of engineering? Chemical of? Uh, no, no, I am from metallurgical engineering background. Met, okay, good, good, metallurgical engineering. So you are the one who should come and see our iron pillar in Delhi and tell us how. Yeah, yeah, I I have gone through like lots of metallurgical studies about the corrosion behavior of the iron uh, pillar. and in fact i had met professor uh, r balas subramaniam at it kanpur okay. that time he was alive and he was doing some nice research yeah, yeah. we can continue this yeah, this work yeah, yeah. we just did this big program on uh, delhi's iron pillar so i i'll share all the information yes. <laughs> because i've also learned that buddha's needle and blade used to be made in indraprasth that is okay. their books are saying so that means this was a important place of uh, metallurgy uh huh I in fact wanted to do my this PhD in archaeometry, but in India there is no such department, oh. <laughs> unfortunately. I think there are lots of ancient metallurgists who will create that department here <laughs> in India. <laughs> yes, we. Yes, yes, yes. But in abroad, you know, other universities they have, but unfortunately in India we don't have. Why don't you ask Dr. Shubhro to IHR to sponsor you for a short program there? <laughs> it's not I about scholarship is sponsoring. That, I tell him. <laughs> but uh, you should think of uh, to in any IIT at least to work in this. Yeah, program. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he they they can fund the IIT to start the yes. program. That is yes. what I'm saying. Create a chair yeah. or something like that. Yes. Because if you have to study ancient India, you have to actually get back down to ancient India's uh, science and technology. Yeah, science and technology very important because it was very much developed that time. Yeah, there's a similar pillar in South India also. Yes. In fact, in Odisha, where I am here, so there are many signatures of ancient uh, work, and uh, I have discussed a uh, few months ago to one professor, very senior professor. He is. Uh, also working in some small projects but that after that this pandemic has come but i wanted to work with uh, in these topics also so we will see how we can materialize it so we are waiting for our vip <laughs> and uh, anybody can share any view on ancient india uh, ojas ji does a lot of work on recreating spiritual and uh, cultural heritage geospatial landscape of india so he is working on landmark projects like somnath uh, then that uh, kedarnath he is also working at ayodhya and he is creating a very good uh, work in uh, shravasti also in lucknow so you know there is so much of uh, we are very happy that uh, a lot of people are actually realizing all this little little 
and uh, you know as i just said that we have with us uh, mr uh, uh, ranjit chaturvedi ji who also who who just doesn't talk he walks the talk so he has uh, done he is so much enamored in fact he is very much disturbed i would say regarding the state of our water bodies whether it is ocean whether it is the rivers whether it is you know other water bodies so he coming from that our ancestral roots that is mathura which is the root of all chaturvedis and the you know vedic people etc he took a yatra pad yatra of uh, from yamnotri till mathura via delhi to create this awareness that if you we do not uh, uh, you know uh, sort of nourish and uh, revive the actual flow of yamuna we, it's going to meet the fate of saraswati and so where will we be what happened after saraswati dried uh, i think veena you will have to tell him because i am un- i have sent him on from both my emails the connection and i can't get his number you know ओके ओके थैंक यू जेप्स थैंक यू i think uh, he is here i'm letting him in oh great great so you have to give permission to everybody yes yes oh god okay no no that, that's the process okay okay, okay i don't know i'm pretty ignorant on the, all these things you know i'm i'm the most uneducated person here actually so niraji we do have Major General Jiri Vaksi Sahib with us. So we can start. Jai Hind, sir. Can audio audio check. Okay, uh, sir. Can you speak something? I'm. One more audio check. Let's see quickly. Uh, we still don't have the audio uh, we can't have to check hear us he's indicating he can't hear us aapki taraf se aryan dekho aapke end se kya hai nahi hamare end se bhi yahan se unmute hai aap no, we, we, ka, we, we can't we can't hear we can't hear you sir to wahan se can you hear us the audio is mujhe lagta hai ki aapko ek bar disconnect audio connect nahi kiya hoga aryan ji ek bar usse boliye sir am i am i audible i don't think he can hear us he can't hear us so we have uh, he has to log in re log in once more i think yeah kyunki audio uh, we can only see his video mode but i can't Aapka see the audio nahi aa raha hai general sahab 
अनम्यूट देख लीजिए कहीं म्यूट तो नहीं हो गया नहीं उनका ऑडियो दिखाई नहीं रहा है एक्चुअली आपका ऑडियो दिख नहीं रहा है सो आई थिंक यू विल हैव टू री लॉग इन आई एम टोल्ड So can you hear us now? Now he's logged in with you. Yes, I think I think I think we should be able to hear him now. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. All right. All right. Namaskar. Namaskar. Can you can you see me and hear me? Yes. Aryan, please. Please update. Yes, sir. absolutely, sir. We can hear. Oh, you can hear right. Lovely roaring voice. Lovely to hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Aryan, आप थोड़ा brief दे दो, then I start. So, I'll do a little technical. Thing. First of all, uh, it's a, definitely it's an honor to have sir with us today, and uh, the session of an hour or so is going to be very very cherishing for all of us. We have been hearing him. For a long time, but today we are going to hear a lot of things from him. Okay, probably which we might not have explored for a long time, and which is very very relevant and important. For when Indraprastha starts speaking, I think it is Major General J D Bakshi who should also speak. <laughs> so only thing is technically what we are going to do is I'll need a little uh, patience from every viewer. Welcome all of you, and uh, I have to keep your video and audio muted for the sessions. What what we do, and then probably we we can uh, you know take up some questions till the time. So first we'll have uh, Niraji, will be introducing the session, and then I'll give a little relevance of uh, today's what is Indraprastha talk is all about, and what is the relevance of the discussion what you are going to have today. And then we are going to go through a question answer with uh, RC. and me representing the people uh, the contemporary people today and we will ask you questions and then uh, we can we can hang uh, sir giving his all brief jo unke paas unki knowledge hai wo hamesha share karenge and then finally we'll go through a conclusion and we can take up some questions from you so whenever we start the uh, question answer sessions from uh, all of you we can get one or, one or two questions which were you want to present i'll get one by one i'll get you on the screen please do at that moment ठीक है सो थैंक यू सो मच आई थिंक आई एम टेकिंग द लिबर्टी टू म्यूट योर वीडियो एंड ऑडियो फॉर द सेशन एक्सेप्ट एक्सेप्ट द थ्री ऑफ ऑफ फोर एक्सेप्ट द एक्सेप्ट ऑबवियसली सर एक्सेप्ट जनरल साहब आरसी एंड माइसेल्फ या ओके आर वी रेडी प्लीज गिव मी द क्लू एंड आई थिंक दिस इज दैट I think we have to mute uh, Virendra ji also. Sir, I'm going to mute pe dalon. Okay. For now. Okay. There we go. We can start the session. Namaskar uh, to everybody and a great, great uh, uh, thank you to. Uh, Uh, general uh, doctor major general g d bakshi ji and i have the great privilege and pleasure of uh, having him at our first uh, indraprastha talks uh, program uh, which is initiated uh, basically in keeping with the trust's vision of creating a better understanding and appreciation of ancient uh, indian civilization culture जिसको हम संस्कृति और सभ्यता कहते हैं और यहाँ की जियो स्पेशल लैंडस्केप को आ, फिर से वही सम्मान देने की दैट इज टू गिव रिस्पेक्ट टू आवर जियो स्पेशल हेरिटेज लीगेसीज ऑफ दिस ग्रेट नेशन कॉल भारत सो इट्स लाइक आई वुड स्टार्ट विद सेइंग जय भारत महाभारत everybody here i think knows draupadi trust so i'm not going to say much i want to share a few things about our relationship with uh, major Gen general dr gd bakshi ji because he's been a patron to us from many many years 
and i still remember the first conference that he uh, sort of was so generous he, when we were both at the viif and uh, he took me to doval sahab and then we did this first conference call how deep are the roots of indian civilization and we general sahab today take on from there today also i would like to take the opportunity before i do a formal introduction to you uh, share something uh, that has been a part of our personal i would say inspirational journey is uh, that 2010 november was a very very disturbing time uh, veena and vasuda here i lost my father during that conference and for 3 days everybody was quiet about it because i told them nobody should know about this because my father used to say beta karm bahut bada important hai apna kartavya aur karm karo and we are always with you uske baad ek choti si cheez hui hai today why i am asking saying this today is soon after the conference general bakshi came up to me he may not remember he calls all veena's friends beta and he said beta bahut acha kaam hua from that day till today because my father was the only one who used to call me beta and from that day until today he calls me beta and i feel the presence of my father whenever i speak to him so thank you thank you so much general bakshi these are moments which help us to take forward our vision in spite of being all alone in this world we feel we are not alone because we have such great stalwarts like you who are just not nationalists for the nation but also great humanity human uh, touch that you have for people uh, who care for the nation and so uh, with that note i would like to introduce general uh, gd bakshi ji who as i said has been associated with us for very long as a patron he is a, we all know a war veteran a very popular and a very vocal nationalist on not only national tv on national tv channels but also through his writings so he has been well decorated by the uh, and forces for his work he joined the army in 19 he was commissioned in 1971 an ima academy student and then also a teacher there and he has been teaching at in defense academies institute of defense strategic studies all these places he sharing his knowledge and through his writings and documentation he has given so much of information about the military uh, movement the military journey of india right from 71 to the kargil war you will find on the net all his books mentioned but it's not only he's limited to that his greatness lies that he links his own civilization also in his work and that is he has written fantastic work on the saraswati and i was also fortunate to associate with him uh, two years ago on the saraswati uh, uh, conference and he has written on the uh, the shamans the original rigvedic people so he has covered a huge range of subjects that are integral to knowing bharat and integral to mahabharat and for me of course the most appealing work that he has done is on the war strategies of mahabharat the military you know aspect of how he compares it with uh, people uh, how uh, how these strategies are still in uh, relevance for today but today's topic is different today's topic is we are discussing indra pras its national and international significance and in this regard at a first international conference he had given a fantastic paper on the Uh, geopolitics of that era and how democracy and monarchy were actually at loggerheads so without much ado i would like to uh, welcome i would also like to say uh, uh, general bakshi and everybody here that this program has been possible due to two important people in my life uh one is uh, mr Ra ranjit chaturvedi who has though i have met him recently because of my yamuna has connected uh, draupadi to uh, uh, to uh, with you know and so we have come together and he, we he is always a source of inspiration and he said you start doing this i am with you and the other person is the technic and he is uh, ranjit chaturvedi is a very prominent businessman though he is a low profile person with his business activities spread across delhi bombay and africa but he is a businessman with a heart 
and that is why for him the covid period has been awakening for his uh, for the love for the bajamuna and for our cultural heritage and i think it's a rare rare quality in a businessman to be so disturbed by this and to be yes everybody does csr but he says he want to csr he walks the talk and general bakshi i'm so happy to tell you that he took a walk of one month but the atra from yamnotri to matra via uh, delhi to raise awareness about this issue because if in, if yamna doesn't survive indrapras doesn't survive and uh, then the other person is aryan who has been associated with us for many years as a csr uh, activity he supports our digital media he is also a entrepreneur and uh, distinction being the first uh, the person to launch the first web series almost 10 years ago and he supports and this so i will and uh, with this little background i hand over to aryan to just lay the foundation of the program and uh, then uh, i will invite general bakshi to start his talk on geopolitics of the mahabharata era the uh, yes aryan please thank you neeraj thank you so much uh, first of all we understand uh, major general gd bakshi doesn't need an introduction he is the roaring lion of india and we have been listening to him uh, quite for a long time and being enraged uh, however i'll take a little moment to uh, describe why this talk why in the press the talks so uske liye main chota sa ek introduction mein dena chahunga so that we can create a foundation for this discussion which i believe is going to evolve like our culture for a long time and today thank uh, thank you uh, major general gd bakshi for creating the foundation of this uh, i'll start with a saying जो छोटे छोटा सा कहा छोटी सी कहावत है ठीक है विच इज अगर जड़ से जुड़े हैं तो जीवित हैं जड़ से अगर जुड़े हैं तो जीवित हैं जड़ से टूटे तो सूखा पत्ता सो वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट आवर कल्चर आवर हिस्ट्री वी आर लाइक दैट ह्यूज बरगद का पेड़ विच हैज बीन इवॉल्विंग थ्रू थाउजेंड ऑफ इयर्स थोड़ा सा पानी दे दे तो जहां पे uh, Uh, the strength the kind of uh, the kind of build up we have for this tree is thousands of years ahead aur hamara jo root hai wo utna hi jar mein established hai so it's very important that to strengthen the tree it's very important we know the, our roots or what we believe is in the prastha is that place jahan pe the tree and the root comes together jahan se hamari journey shuru hoti hai that is in the prest in the prest has been a silent observer for thousands of thousands of years jahan pe bahut alag alag tarike ke forces is pe kaam karte hain which is unifying forces and diversifying forces that has been working in the complete evolution of our culture it has been a silent observer so today we feel it starts speaking because that is exactly what is going what is be you know going to be the heritage of ours the strength of our culture is understanding the root aur is root ko samajhne ke liye hame bahut behad zarurat hai ki hum samjhe ki kis kis tarike ke forces yahan pe hamare culture ko evolve karne mein to evolve our culture how many kind of forces are acted and that's exactly the journey through which major general jd bakshi is going to take us take through us sir please it's your podium please enrich us thank you Welcome, welcome, Dr. Jaljit Ji. Dr. Jaljit Ji, Bakshi Ji. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Very loud and clear. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, thank you, Beta Mira, and thank you uh, for this very generous introduction. And uh, it's very kind of you to say such good things about an old soldier. Ah, uh, history has been my passion. My passion, and all my life I have. try right to understand history because as george santania says those who do not learn from history will be condemned to repeat it right the period of the mahabharat is the period of the yuga one yuga ending one age ending and another starting another the age of kali the age of iron the age of machine our present day civilization dates back to the armageddon the great war of the mahabharat now let me put this in some you know geopolitical kind of a context the mother river of the indian civilization 
incidentally, it was not the Hindu, it was the Saraswati. The entire Rig Vedic civilization, the core area was around the Saraswati in the system. Ganga, that time, was not there. But it was not, uh, I mean, it was there, but it was not so significant in the Indian civilizational context as the, 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 the significance that it now has. Right? That was the time that uh, the Vedic civilization was concentrated, focused along the Sapta Siddhava, the seven great streams of India mentioned in the Nadi Sukta. The Nadi Sukta mentioned these seven rivers. These were starting from the east, Ganga, Yamuna, Saraswati, Hindu, and then, of course, uh, we had the smaller rivers of the Bias, the Satlaj, the Panj uh, five rivers of the Punjab. So, five rivers of the Punjab plus these two main rivers, Ganga, Yamuna, they form the, uh, the Sapta Sindhava, the land of the seven rivers which is the civilizational space of the Rig Vedic Aryan civilization. Now, the Harappan civilization, which till now was deemed separate, had the same geographical area, which is the sacred geography of the Rig Vedic. Right? So now, the scholars said, are these two the same? Two billion square kilometers area, civilizational area, from the borders of Baluchistan right down to UP, right down to you know Gujarat, right down to Maharashtra. Right? That was supposed to be the original Indian civilizational space. And then the recent researches have uh, discovered that these two civilizations were not separated in time as brought out by Macaulay, but they were one and the same. Now, when the Mahabharat starts, by the time the Mahabharat started, the Sindhu had more or less dried out, had started vanishing. In the Shanti Parva of the Mahabharat, there is a description of how Balram was disgusted with this war. And he and Krishna had strong disagreement. He says, I don't agree with you, Krishna, for letting this war happen. You have done damage to India. You know, he was very angry with his brother and he refused to take any part in the war. And then he is said to have started a pilgrimage along the course of the Saraswati. This is mentioned in the Mahabharata, if you please. This is mentioned in the Mahabharata. And uh, as he started walking along the Saraswati, he found that at a place called Vinashna, in Rajasthan, from Gujarat he was going up. It had just vanished. It had gone underground. And that is a geographical fact today, geological fact. These, in the, the Saraswati original stream are underground from the Indus uh, uh, From uh, Vinashana, that is near Jaisalmer. It's gone underground. And north of the Vinashana, it had broken into a series of pools and lakes and small little streams. For 12 years, there had been, well, Ram described, had been a drought, one of the most severe droughts in uh, recent world history, which is called the uh, Meghalayan period. In this, the Saraswati Indus civilization completely died out and uh, of course, the civilization in Mesopotamia, Nile, they all dried out at the same time. So the Indian civilization had affected by the time of the Mahabharat, the switch from the Saraswati to the Ganga Yamuna flood plain. Very important fact to remember. The Indian civilization core area had shifted from the Saraswati in this area, flood plain, to the Ganga Yamuna flood plain to the east. The significant shift in Indian history. Major, major shift. So the heartland had become around in their process. Satellite imagery has shown us, you know, that the bulk of the civilizational settlement were not on the Indus, but they were along the banks of the Saraswati dried out. 
and saraswati used to pass through kurukshetra so the densest cluster of settlement even of that civil a large number had shifted to the ganga yamuna settled this was now the core civilization area the what is called the heartland the heartland of india right and now let us just take amatya's call who bolo uh amo times now ki call aa rahi hai adi times now ki call aa rahi bolo le le ha so sorry sorry for that interruption as i was saying the uh, core civilizational area had shifted to the ganga yamuna flood now a very curious development was taking place here and that was his voice is good aapki the yadavas were uh, aapki voice the yadavas uh, we sorry wo uh, i think times now is calling and have it taken on the other one so as i was saying the oh, oh. sorry uh, i think we'll just continue uh, then the rigging will stop they are calling me desperately now uh, uh, as i was saying as i was saying that uh, uh, as i was saying that you are asked them to take that call yaar times now ki sir i'm not letting you speak sir aap call utha lijiye ab uske baad continue kar lenge koi dikkat nahi it is important i don't know from how to lift this damn call up also बेटा वो उसकी कॉल ले लो टाइम्स नाउ हेलो हाँ सॉरी हाँ नहीं वो ले लो कितने कितने बजे चाहिए ओके सॉरी अच्छा तो as i was saying as i was saying that uh, in this in this core civilizational area we had a, a phenomena that was coming up and that phenomena was that the yadava clans of krishna they had become a democracy kans was a very cruel ruler don't forget he had killed all the sibling of krishna because of that uh, of that prophecy that the child of his sister would would be his killer so he had killed all the children the siblings of krishna and uh, then uh, he krishna we all know how he was saved by him being taken out and replaced with you know uh, the girl child and uh, kans came and killed that girl child you see and as she was uh, dying you know there was a kind of spirit more or less said that your killer is there he is be born elsewhere you have murdered me but your killer is there so krishna and balram and the brothers grew up they were just in their teens they were very strong and krishna had learned his guru was ghor angiras a great atharvan of that era you know atharvans could do lot of magical psychological warfare kind of thing and they had lot of power so krishna had learned from bhorangira you know and he and his brother were able to overthrow and kill you know this kans uh, in a palace coup and thereafter they established democratic rule rule almost like a tribal council like there was no king there was no hereditary king and the people more or less had elected krishna and balram as their first leader right now when this seed of democracy started flowering in india and don't forget by the time of the buddha there were many clan republics the lichavis and you know vaishali and all these were clan republics so democracy was not a gift of the british to us 
It did not, was not a foreign import to India. It was in the natural soil of India that Krishna was the first democratic ruler in the whole of the subcontinent. And you can imagine how much that worried, how deeply, how greatly that worried all the monarchical, absolute monarchy that was there. Now, Kansa had family, had uh, marriage ties with Jarasan of Bhagada, one of the most powerful rulers of that time. And with many other kings, you know, in those days, alliances were done based upon marriages and uh, these kind of ties. So, he had lots of relationships with a lot of very strong monarchical states on the borders of Mathura, on the borders of the kingdom of Krishna and Balaram, which was now a, a democracy, a liberal democracy, which elected its leader rather than hereditary from birth kind of a thing. Right? And take your mind to what happened in, the, in Europe around the 17th century. France became a republic. France overthrew the king, slaughtered its king, uh, the royal family, and it became a republic. And this threatened all the monarchies of Europe, so they all ganged up to come and destroy the republic in France and to restore the kingship, restore the royal uh, absolute monarchical system. A similar thing happened in the times of Krishna. He was repeatedly attacked again and again and again and again. There was no peace. They would defeat Jarasan one time. He would come back again with a stronger force and then a stronger force and keep sending his general, you know. Ultimately, you know, they, we all know that uh, Krishna undertook the great long march, the great retreat, for which he was called Ranchod. But Krishna had the strategic sense to understand that you can't stay in a place where you are surrounded by enemies. Your nation will not progress. You will get destroyed one time or the other. You will be overwhelmed. So he decided that the entire Yadava clan migrated all the way from the Ganga Yamuna heartland all the way down to Gujarat on the western sea coast of India. This is called the Great Migration. If you remember, in the Chinese, when Mao Zedong, Mao Zedong was, you know, fighting with the Kuomintang in China, he was similarly put under pressure and to survive. He had taken a very similar long march. About 3,000 years ago, or 3,000 miles ago, you know, he had made his uh, base in the high mountains where he would at least be safe. He would not be in the main civilizational area. And even uh, Chiang Kai-shek was happy. His German advisors were happy. Oh, we have pushed him out from the Chinese plane. He is no longer relevant in the main landmass of China. So he, of course, had gone there. He built his strength there. Then he counterattacked. And we all know in 1949, he had completely destroyed the anti Shek and become uh, made China into a communist country. So something very similar happened. He, Krishna decided to move out, stage a strategic retreat from the Ganga Yamuna heartland and retreat thousands of kilometers to Gujarat. To Gujarat. And there he made a very prosperous kingdom with the capital at Dwarka. Dwarka was, you know, in that era, a legendary capital. Legendary capital. Even now, the divers are bringing out the ruins of Dwarka, that place where the lord of Dwarka had his capital. Wonderful. What architecture, what uh, great, a greatly advanced civilization we are seeing. A large part has been destroyed because don't forget if you go to Nepal and you see the palaces of the king, they are all made of wood. Such magnificent structure. But unfortunately, wood will not survive under water and wood also perishes because of the uh, humid climate that we have, the long monsoon. You know, wood also rots and gets destroyed here. So most of the, uh, the glory of that era, you can't see today. 
If you see the Narayan Hati Palace in Kathmandu, what a grand palace it is. It's all wood. It's all wood. Those were the kind of palaces that you had. No, uh, because there was no dearth of forest and there was no dearth of trees here in India of that era. So when Krishna got, uh, you know, marginalized to the, to the, to the uh, western shore of India, he was not marginalized from the geopolitics. He did not become irrelevant. In fact, he was such a great strategist that it is said Gandhari accused him of engineering the Mahabharat war. And why did the Lord do it? He did it for two reasons. One, that, you know, righteousness, dharma would be established by getting people who were oriented towards dharma. The Kaurava king, uh, Duryodhan, had gone quite power mad. And, you know, with what he tried to do to Draupadi, etc., he had lost the moral right really to rule. He had lost that moral right to rule. So, Krishna made the uh, made the two greatest monarchical powers of that time, the Pandavas and the Kauravas, fight a war on the principle of succession. You know, on the principle of succession. And uh, that time it was, you know, that so-called divine conception. Don't forget that Kunti had conceived and her younger, uh, the younger wife had conceived because of intervention of the mantra, intervention of the deva. Now, was that to be recognized or not to be recognized? No, like Christ's uh, birth is supposed to have been uh, not by the normal way, but also conceived by God. Very, it is said conceived by God. So, you know, so that principle was there and there was the fight on this principle in the Mahabharata. And there were at that time many great warriors who had developed these psychological weapons, mind weapons, by which they could use their pranic powers to kill at a distance. You know, to kill at a distance. Brahmastra, Narayanastra, etc., etc., Sarpastra, all these great astras. I mean, Parshuram had it, he had taught it to Bhishma, taught it to Krishna, Dronacharya knew it, Dronacharya had taught it to the uh, Pandavas, mostly to Arjun and Ashwatthama. So they were the people who had become power centers in themselves. They were like Jedi Knights. And they were, some of them were mis misusing these powers. So what is the best way to get the world rid of these astras? Make the two fight in a very, very major war. At a lower strategic level of what we call uh, understanding, of strategy today, the strategy that Krishna used was war avoid. War avoid. He made the two big powers fight. Every other kingdom in the whole of India then came and took side. Either the Kaurava side or the Pandava side. And most of them chose the Pandava or uh, the Kaurava side. And that army grew uh, Akshawani, Atara Akshawani to Sena. You know? And uh, then he made them fight. He did not take part in that war. He was charioteer. He said, I will not lift them. He was charioteer to Arjun. And therefore, he saw the whole war. He maneuvered the whole war. He strategized the whole war. The two sides, the greatest bloodbath on this earth. Matlab, wo, jo, jo, jo rath the, unke paye dhas rahe the, इतना खून से खून का कीचड़ हो पहिए धस रहे थे टिल देयर एक्टिंग दे हैड टू बी पुल्ड आउट एंड वी ऑल नो हाउ कर्णा डाइड राइट सो इन कृष्णा अवॉइडेड वॉर हिमसेल्फ ही मेड द टू बिग पास फाइट यस द पांडव वाज वन बट द होल नॉर्थ इंडिया वाज सो वीकेंड दैट द मोस्ट पावरफुल किंगडम दैट इमर्ज्ड वाज हु कृष्णा and, you know, Gandhari accused Krishna of starting this war deliberately. Starting this war and destroying the monarchical power. So that democracy would prevail in the whole of North India. 
you know, because the conflict was between monarchical, absolute monarchical system and democratic system. So at the end of the Mahabharata, which is the strongest power field, that is the Yadavas, the Democrats. They are the strongest power to emerge from this huge, huge power play that we see in the uh, in the in the Mahabharata Armageddon, the Great War. But you know, Krishna had the foresight. He could. He was a visionary. He could see what was coming in the future. He had destroyed all these people people with extraordinary power of destruction. Those who could wield the Brahmastra were dead. Those who could wield the, the Narayana Astra were dead. The Sarpastra and all those Shaktis, they were all dead and gone. He made sure they killed one another. So that a new age started and the Kali Yuga started. He forecast the end of his own clan. And he forecast his own death. When his own death was to come, he just went and sat in the uh, you know, in the in the forest. And there one, as we all know, a hunter mistook his bow for a deer peeking out of a rock. And only place where Krishna was vulnerable was in the hill, actually his hill. You know, in Greek mythology, we have actually who was vulnerable only in the hill. And in Indian mythology, you have Krishna. In all probability, the Greek mythology has mythologized the same characters given them different names. For example, there is Helen of Troy who is uh, abducted. Here, Sita is abducted. She is taken to another place, another island, and the, here she is taken to Sri Lanka. And then there is an invasion. There is a siege. And there is there are the battles. So, there is a lot of commonality in the core myth of the Indic civilization and the Greek. Now, I would like to say a few things about the Indian view of history. The Indian view of history. You know, there are two schools in history. One is the Arnold Toynbee school. And the other is the Marxist. Right? The Marxist view of history. Arnold Toynbee says, that it is the great captains of war, the great rulers, you know, the uh, the Ashoka, the Hitler, etc., etc., who shape history. The Churchill, the Roosevelt, the Stalin, great leaders, they shape history. The Mao Zedong, right? The Marxist school of history says, oh, these are just labels. Agar Hitler nahi hota to or koi madman a jata Germany mein like Himmler or Goering or any one of them could have become that kind of a madman who took Germany to war and almost destroyed the world and certainly Germany was destroyed. In that gutter, diamond run, Germany was destroyed. So uh, they say, the Marxists say, it is the forces of history. It is the forces of history that really create the great change. And the kings and the great leaders are just a label. Just a label that you put on a bottle. Wo bottle ke andar kya hai? Shaped not by that leader, but by those who made that bottle. The forces of history. You know, for example, Second World War, there was the Great Depression. And the world economy had been ruined. In Germany, there was so much inflation that one loaf of bread used to cost a million marks. So people were so frustrated. People were so fed up. You know? So that, in short, is the Marxist school of history and the Toy P school of history. In India, we have a great synthesis of this in, this, in the historical outlook which has been propounded in the Gita. And what is the basis of the historical outlook of the Gita? Yada yada hi dharmasya vanir bhavati bharata abhyutthana you know, whenever righteousness declines, you know, there is a social condition, overwhelming condition of distress, challenge from the natural or social environment. You know, then I incarnate. A great leader comes who takes the Indian civilization 
to the new uh, dawn, to a new beginning. This is exactly what Krishna did. This is exactly what Rama did. You know, Rama spread the Indian empire right down to the south. And, of course, he had gone to Sri Lanka also and imposed Bhishan, Vibhishan as the ruler there, who was loyal to him. So he had united North and South India. Uh, in Krishna, we see he had brought up democracy. He had brought up democracy by making the monarchical powers fight. So yada yada hi dharmasya. Whenever righteousness declines, whenever there is great chaos, great turbulence, natural, social, environment, then I arise. You know, so the great leader is as important as the forces of change that bring about the change. So this is the, uh, in brief, uh, very brief overview. I can, of course, talk for hours, but uh, I have <laughs> further... Uh, uh, question answers, General, and uh, I would request R.C. Uh, Ranji Chaturvedi ji to take over now. General Saab, wow. I mean, I've heard you on television. It's the first time I hear a lion roar in my earphones. Thank you. Thank you. Now, General Saab, uh, I will just come to very specific questions. Right. And as a youth of this nation, and uh, being a, a Hindu myself, a Chaturvedi from Mathura, so my first question to you is, Aapne tha ki that uh, Vinashana mein somewhere in Rajasthan, this, the, the Saraswati vanished. Uh, right. by, by banished, it could also mean it went underground or something like that. <laughs> now... If I just try to create an analogy between that Saraswati is with Brahmaji, Brahmaji is the progenitor of the Vedas. Right. So, could it also mean, in some way, I want to know your views, that Saraswati ka vilin hone ka matlab hai ki hamare Vedon ka bhi vilin hona saath saath, people practicing the Vedas? Very good question. Uh, you know, in the Vedic system of philosophy, hmm. a mantra has many levels of meaning. You know, it's like a stone thrown in the water. Mm -hmm. So, Adi Bhautik, Adi Yakit, Adi Daivik. Mm -hmm. You know, so there are many ripples and many, many, many levels of me. Let me mm -hmm. just give you a simple example. Yes. Jal. Mm -hmm. What does Jal mean? What does Jal mean? Mm -hmm. Jal, Pine ka Pani? Yeah. Uh, jal gaya. Pani. Oh. Ah, ah, main Jal Gaya. Ah, Jal Gaya. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the same word, Jal, is the exact opposite. Mm. It is water, it is uh, that which uh, uh, puts out, uh, you know, the fire, Jal. So the Jal, Jal Gaya is to burn and there it is to descend. So there are many levels of meaning. So there are many, uh, why I'm giving this background is, mm. there are many levels at which you can interpret the, interpret the vanishing of the Saraswati. The first is the geophysical level. Mm -hmm. In actual fact, geologists tell you that this stream has gone underground at Vinashana. At that place called Vinashana, it has gone underground. One stream is at about 60 meters depth and the other is about over 100 meters depth. Right? There are two streams of water flowing underground till the sea. Mm -hmm. Sweet water. And the army has done, you know, boring to get that water out. Hmm. And the now the state government is doing what to get that sweet water out. And if we get it all out, Rajasthan will become as green as Haryana. And the Vedas will come back to its glory. Huh? Ah. So that is the that is the physical level. Hmm. The second level you are absolutely right. The Vedas did not have temples. You know, by the time of the Mahabharata, the principal gods have become not Indra, Ashwin, mm -hmm. Surya, Soma, you know, uh, uh, Brihaspati, etc. Who are the principal gods? Shiva, Vishnu, Mahesh, this tradition. Mm -hmm. So the entire Vedic pantheon of gods has, they have been forgotten more or less, and a new set of gods have come up. And the Vedas believe in forest retreats to go and silence your mind. Hmm. Now you find you are not going to the forest to silence your mind. You are going into temples. You are going into 
uh, murti puja and possibly some people say you have taken this idea from the greeks of having grand temples the temples then become centers of learning you no longer go to the forest retreat for silence in your mind for living in the eco niche the entire basis of the gurukul system of the vedas is gone right and you find that you have a new center where is the temples not only become centers of knowledge piety worship they also become centers of commerce and some historians say that the temples had so much wealth that they were doing their function of bank lending to traders lending to those so that they could you know carry out their trade capital posai of capital accumulation and over a period of time the brahmins who served there became more more mercantile than they than they became pious right and we became lazy right we depended on our temples to defend us rather than we defending our temples mm. and we all know what happened to us are wo murti hai hamari pratima hai idhar wo defend kare that will not defend you have to defend yourself mahabharat so and 10th century onwards you know the way this country has been raped looted plundered burned sacked Eighth hmm. century, ये तमाशा देख। Now the Saraswati is the Vimal. Superb right. sir, great answer. So yeah. my second question, if right. uh, you may allow me, my second yeah. second question is, you said that the Vedic, uh, the Rig Vedic Aryan civilization was around the Saraswati, the Harappan civilization was uh, around the Indus, but as you said that the the, the modern uh, day geographists and geologists they believe that the 2 billion square kilometers was the two civilizations put together now having said that do you think because my my second question is related to our independence do you think that if had we known this information at that time that the shift that we indians we actually came from there to here to the ganga yamuna pehle hum log wahan par the so do you think that during the partition giving away pakistan balochistan was a terrible mistake of course it was a terrible thing because uh, the indic civilizational space has lost almost one fifth of its area not one in terms of not in terms of geographic sir but in terms of jo hamari jo origin hai hamara jo bilkul saraswati ka civilization hai kyunki yeah. is nazariye se koi nahi dekhta aaj hum sirf ye dekhte hain ki muslims wahan chale gaye hindus yahan reh gaye ye ye wo hua tha jinnah and gandhi but aap se ye janne ko ye mil raha hai ki hamara jo jo roots hain jo aryan keh rahe the हमारी रूट गंगा जमुना से पहले वो थी वो हमने छोड़ दी वो देखिए देखिए इट्स लाइक दिस सैटेलाइट फोटोग्राफ्स हैव टुडे शोन अस दैट द सरस्वती होल रिवर ट्रैक इज विजिबल ऑन द सैटेलाइट फोटोग्राफ फर्स्ट सैटेलाइट टू सी इट वाज लैंडसैट अमेरिकन सैटेलाइट इन 1970 एंड देन अ होल सीरीज ऑफ इसरो सैटेलाइट Have mapped the Saraswati from the Mansarovar Lake down to the Arabian Sea. This is what the Rig Veda said. It flows from the mountains to the sea, and now the satellite photographs have seen the dried river bed. It is visible from the satellite. It was six to eight kilometers wide, four thousand six hundred kilometers long. The Yamuna and the Satluj used to join the Saraswati. It was only because of great earthquakes that the Yamuna changed course and joined the Ganga, and the Satluj joined the Indus. If this was denied, ice melt water became a monsoonal stream. Monsoons failed for twelve years around the Mahabharata. Saraswati dried out, and with it, a civilization died. So we actually partition. So, so we actually in partition gave away our roots uh, uh, instead of just just geographic no, there. No. No, no. Uh, let me now uh, elaborate there. Let me now elaborate there. Yes, you gave a part of your. Okay. The Saraswati still flows through mostly India. Jai Ho. <laughs> uh, the Saraswati still flows from the Himalayas. It used to come down. It used to cross the Shivaliks, right? And then from there, it used to flow through present-day Haryana, Rajasthan, only for a small portion. 
Hmm. It exports uh, Abbas, you know. Uh, it 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 goes into Pakistan for a loop, and then comes but right back to Rajasthan. Goes Bira Jaisalmer into Gujarat, where it joins the sea in the run of cut. Okay, bulk of the Saraswati is with here, and satellite photography has again shown that 80 percent of the so-called Indus Valley civilizational settlements were not on the Indus. They were on the Saraswati. The mother river is the Saraswati, not the Indus, right? It is when the Greeks came. By that time, Saraswati had dried out. 1900 BC, it dried out, right? So by the time the Greeks came, they found no Saraswati. They found Indus. They said Indus, Indica, India. That's mm -hmm. how you got your name. When the Arabs came. They found only the Indus, that is the Sindhu. They called it. They can't pronounce S. They called it the Hindu. For Soma, they say Homa. Huh? The Iranian and the Arab. So they called it the Hindu, Hindustan, and you know uh, from them the name has come. They got the wrong river. That was an outlying river. So you are lucky that the bulk of your civilizational roots are still here along the Saraswati river bed. But they have died out. The roots have died. You had to shift your civilizational area to the Gang Ganga Yamuna flood plain, uh, where the bulk of our population also dwell. And the the new, the, you know, the holiness that was ascribed to the Saraswati is now ascribed to the Gang. When uh, you and I or any of our relations die, my ashes will be immersed in the Ganga. But my print down for my father, for my mother, where did I go for print down? Kurukshetra. So I was wondering, Kurukshetra में कौन सी नदी? Saraswati. पितरों की नदी Saraswati. Print down इसीलिए Saraswati. So that is the civilizational linkage. We are lucky. We still have our core area. If you can get the water flowing again, and the Rajasthan government is working on plans. There are plans to get revive the Saraswati. There is a lot of debate. One thing is take out the water from tube well, use it to green the desert, right? And like the Israelis do, use it to green the desert. But don't bring it to the surface. Most of it will be polluted, will be evaporated. What has happened to the Yamuna and the Ganga will happen to the Saraswati. उसको नीचे रहने दो और वो राजस्थान कैनाल, as it is, is flow uh, is almost flowing along the Track of the parallel to the track of the Saraswati. So keep the Rajasthan Canal going, but the Vinashna ke south ka jo area hai, usko green kariye by breaking up millions of liters of deep water, 60 meters long. Punjab me to 150 pe mil raha hai, and you know Punjab is your green revolution area. You can re-green this country by reviving the Saraswati. Reviving the Saraswati, regenerating civilization. Go back to the Vedas. Go back to your roots. The Saraswati is not only a physical stream; it is the goddess of knowledge. Ji. Watch. It is the goddess of speech. It is the goddess of learning. It is the goddess of intuition. Hmm. Revive the Saraswati. Damn it! Revive the Saraswati. The end of the Saraswati caused the. Destruction of the Mahabharat war. Most of our Kshatriyas were destroyed there. We became weak. That is the ending of the Vedic civilization. We need to go back to the Vedas. Next question. Marshi Dayan and Sakhi Dayan. I have one last throat. question. Should we let Aryan ask Aryan the question, Aryan. or Neeraji, or should I? No, no. Aryan, ko aap dekh lijiye. Aap log aapas mein kar lijiye. Aryan, you bring in one. Yeah, I do. I do have uh, my question. In fact, if you have if you have few more questions, you can ask. Definitely. I just have one more. I just no, have one last. Acha, because I'll have to go next. There's another. Acha, to thik hai. So my my actually, because because we have a very strong strategist with us. My question representing the youth of today is very strategic. तो मुझे लगा कि बक्सी साहब से मुझे डेफिनेटली ये सवाल पूछना चाहिए सर हम डेमोक्रेसी की बात कर रहे हैं और हम गोइंग बैक टू योर स्टेटमेंट दैट इफ यू डोंट लर्न फ्रॉम आवर हिस्ट्री वी कैन नेवर बिल्ड अ गुड फ्यूचर सो माय क्वेश्चन इज टुवर्ड्स बिल्डिंग 
towards making Bharat, Bharat to Mahabharat. So building India for tomorrow, say in 2050, our country, how Bharat should be. So usme, what should be our strategy to connect our youth to our roots? That's the first, my first question is how we can connect our youth, present youth to our roots. What are the major quick steps we should take? Second, sir, may I have a please? Okay, sir. Dusra ye heke, a koi bi tantra, am prajatantri bakare, koi bi tantra, a prajatantru, bina praja hitke, safal kavini osakta. So, what is going to be our strategy so that the essence of our democracy, Jamar Pehelete, was some conce essence there, just may ham praja hitko, we can give more priority in building our prajatantra, making it more stronger for future. Excellent question. My first, how do we revive Bharat into that Mahabharat? Number one, we revive, we go back to the Vedas. We sure. go back to the Vedas. We go back to the Upanishads. Have you read the Upanishads? My God. They have anticipated quantum mechanics by thousands of years. They have solved the hard problem. What is consciousness? That is the problem that Physics is dealing with now. I hope you know that. In quantum mechanics, there is no pure objective observation without the observing consciousness. So they are trying to crack the hard problem. What exactly is consciousness? How does it operate work? Right? You know, thousands of years from today. So that is number one. And when we go back and occupy all our civilizational area, Strategically, that will be Mahabharata. You will be a country far greater than China. In terms of resources, in terms of manpower, in terms of power. So first, we have to win back the subcontinent. Win back the subcontinent. Destroy Pakistan. Destroy Pakistan, which is an artificial creation meant to keep you weak. Strategically, that is the way to go. Create Baluchistan, create Sindhustan, create, you know, uh, Shia enclaves in Pakistan. Break your enemy. I mean, that's the way you have to go. You have to be as ruthless as that. Thank you. One more question, more question please. Last question, because yes. I asked yeah, yeah. That, that is thinking. the most important question. Can I here. take it, Neeraji, your question? No, no, your view that is important question that he has yeah. to answer that last Yes, time. the important question and the final question, yeah. General Saab, is if you say Krishna was the first democratically elected ruler, right? He was he created a he he brought a paradigm shift, a revolutionary yeah. shift. So yeah. do you think that we are at the brink of a similar situation today where we need that shift? And that man, that God democratically elected God, created the first democratically elected, he, he put the stone down for Indra Prastha, which is our modern day Delhi and right. our capital of this great nation. Right. So do you think that changing the name of Delhi to Indra Prastha would be that first step in all that you've said, bringing the Vedas back, bringing the Saraswati back, bringing Pakistan, Baluchistan back and bringing our culture, our root, everything, making Bharat Mahabharat again. Do you think that could be the first step? Yeah, I, I would reckon that the form of democracy that we have created for ourselves now needs to be tweaked. We have inherited from the, <coughs> the colonial masters a total fractured polity, which the British fractured deliberately along every known fault line. And the first fault line they chose was of caste. We have a, a destroyed civilization based on caste fault line. Your elections are held on caste and creed and language and every kind of divisive force. We have to integrate. We have to get back to the Vedic philosophy that there was no difference between North and South. The emphasis on caste was not so much. It is a British construct meant to divide and rule. Now, 75 years after the British have gone, you can't carry on with that ridiculous British concept. Right? So we have to get to a presidential form of democracy. I don't think this one works, where the experts are selected by the president to be the minister. And not some of the, I'm sorry to use the word, such classic clowns that we have been seeing in the last 75 years. Some of them are classic clowns, you know. They don't deserve to be there just because, you know, you deserve to be, uh, you know, enact the laws 
when we hope there are over 500 people, tens will prevail. But for running the government day to day, you need expert. You need expert. Yes, General Saab. So I request you to uh, tell us about uh, reinstating Indrapras because the strategic king of Bharat was he did the foundation for Indrapras. And just one more thing I would like you to answer after this uh, Aryan's question of how to involve the youth in this. So first about Indrapras, reinstating the name of Indrapras. That's right. You see, I, uh, there is no argument there. The original name of Delhi is in the trust, and it should be in the trust. By all rights, it should be in the trust. I mean, what's so significant about Delhi? You know, the Angrejo ka diawa naam, so we have to maintain it. If the name of Mumbai can change, if the name of uh, Kolkata, Calcutta can change, and uh, you know, so many other towns, the names have been brought back to their historic roots. So why not? This will be symbolic. What is going to be matter really is a way back to the Vedas, way back to the primal Indian philosophical outlook of action, karma, yoga. So how can we strategically how can we strategically involve the youth to do this and come forward and get more connected to Vedas and connected to our root? I think we need history club all over the country. Bharatiya Itihas, Itihas Club, you know, so that at the grassroots village level, they learn their history. Because I'm sorry, seven years of BJP rule, and we haven't been able to reform our history books. Our history is supposed to start with the Mughal Empire. Baki sab uske pehle jangli janwar thi. You know, and uh, Netaji ka naam mita do. Bhagat Singh ko terrorist bolo. And you continue 75 years after independence. You deserve. I mean, I don't know what to say. Chullu bar pani mein do marne ki baat hai. We can't reform our history. The question is, why are we not able to do it? You are not able to do it. You are not able to do it. You are not able to do it. They very rightly think that with every government change, we can't start changing history. We have passed our IAS exam. We have passed our IAS exam. We have passed our IAS exam. And we have passed our IAS exam. So that is history. It can't be changed. I have passed fraudulent. So when you see the bureaucrats, they are the ones resisting it tooth, nail, and claw. And you find in our democracy, you have straight away the uh, shortcoming. They have not been able to influence the bureaucrats to stop that uh, you know, resistance to change of history. And the th third thing is that most of our right-wing historians I'm sorry, are very poor, very, very, in terms of academic uh, uh, credentials, very poor. Because uh, homemade hai sare ki sare. So that doesn't work when you have to convince outsiders. You know, then they say, ki, oh, ye to, it is just, uh, after all, it can't be a diktat ki history. I feel it is this way. You have to show it, it is this way. It is, right. Thank you. Now I must yes, head on to the any, any last question? Otherwise, anybody? Because there is another think, uh, webinar with us. Achha, ha, ha. So I think, uh, Janice, I will have to again give you trouble after maybe two, three weeks to come back to us with uh, more enlightening. And of no, course, no, we'll keep uh, coming. You yeah, we'll keep, keep, yeah, maybe we'll keep it every 15 aap, days. Aap, aap history club of uh, Indira Prasth se shuru oh, okay. or, uh, and uh, we can have once a month at least a uh, oh, talk, yes. a discussion. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, so, Ashi and Aryan, are you listening? Yes. Uh, sorry, audience, we are not able to unfortunately take any question today, but he has promised to come back and we'll. Oh, we'll keep coming. We'll so keep thank coming. you so, so very much. Keep roaring, sir. Thank keep roaring, General. Jai Hind. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat. Thank you. So wow, what a great session. What a great session. Uh, Thank so, you, everybody. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, we can. Uh, we you can continue numbers, with the audience, uh, RC yes, and Aryan, and take a few of their questions which they have left. I mean, they yes, we can. We can consolidate them. I, I just unmute uh, everybody. I think let's Open let's unmute everybody. everybody. Open yes. Can everybody. We, can we please ask uh, everybody to unmute their uh, video and audio, and we can get into a discussion and we can uh, make a summary of whatever we heard from uh, Major General. And then, of and course, for the next let's also take the suggestions. Right. Let's also and build the suggestions. up, build up few more questions to use this forum and present it to different experts, including Mr. Bakshi again when he comes back.
I think आप कोऑर्डिनेट करो कहाँ से शुरू करना है ओजस जी यू हर्ड अबाउट द्वारका एंड एवरीथिंग वुड यू हैव एनीथिंग टू से प्लीज यू हैव डन सो मच वर्क ऑन द्वारका Yes, yes. Uh, no, actually, it was an excellent session. In fact, uh, Virendra Groberji had uh, again. He has supported the fact that we can. We have to change the name to Indraprast. He has put. He has. He has put up his vision in in the chat. Thank you so much for that. I'll read it up for you. In fact, I'll ask Virendra ji to read it himself. Ha, please, Virendra. Virendra ji, can you please unmute yourself? Yes, sir. We have Virendra ji. He has. Uh, I would like to please express your vision towards it because you have already posted something very amazing out there. See, my idea was that, that see, the name reversal is a long process. It takes time. We have to do both. And but we have a very easy thing that is possible. The central vista that is being built. Now, we have the central secretariat. We have the secretary. We have the general secretary. Now, if the zone has been changed, we have the name of the zone changed. एक शुरुआत होगी कम से कम हमारा हार्ट जो है मैनेजमेंट का उसका नाम इंद्रप्रस्थ हो जाएगा एंड देन वी कैन प्रोसीड definitely that is very one good, very good constantly subject. discussing out here in the panel uh, the one of, idea. one of the biggest reason to start this forum was to uh, you know take a step further and create few landmarks like this because these are the landmarks which is going to create our future the way our few landmarks has created Adi, our Adi. uh can i have mr irani uh, unmute himself yeah wait what am i ek aur hai i had requested ojas ji to say a few words and then daddy in fact uh, Vas vasudha ji also ha uh, vasudha also has to say because ojas ji is connected to dwarka and indrapras that's why i just thought that let him be share his Huge. so he he's he's the, he's the interlink between you know democracy yeah. all together right so please your vision yes, yes. oh just please please yeah, yeah, because i am not able to okay i I'll, i'll do that sir i'll do that i'll do that guys to thoda sa ha ha right Okay. Yes, 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 I I can. I, I was just uh, waiting for uh, Baxi, sir uh, to get delinked. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, it was an excellent session, and we had lots of good suggestions like the history club and all. Uh, but uh, I was thinking uh, throughout uh, uh, his explanation that if we can. Uh, uh, put all these ideas uh, into some kind of a, a park or museum or in some some of the project so people can easily understand all these aspects because sometimes uh, the visual impact is much more powerful than these kind of lectures for common people at least so if you can do some kind of projects taking his guidelines and uh, make it uh, uh, available to the layman uh, i was doing uh, a few projects like as you mentioned uh, like dwarika i have done one project suvarna nagari uh, when our honorable prime minister was chief minister he has asked me to uh, develop these kind of a proposal so there we have uh, try to incorporate all the uh, character and uh, uh, character of krishna and try to bring it into architecture in such a way that each and every people who visit that particular park can enjoy and can understand that uh, what was krishna's legacy at that time and why he is still relevant very good. so i think uh, i think we we'll have to take it to another level it should not remain talk so that is rc's job that i have given yes, the job yes, to rc yes. एक्ट आयनिकली दिल्ली में हमारे पास एक जगह है आई थिंक वसुधा इज रेजिंग अ क्वेश्चन अच्छा अच्छा ओके प्लीज प्लीज नो 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 प्लीज प्लीज कंप्लीट 
अच्छा तो हमारे पास जैसे कि हम लोग अगर विजुअली भी चीजें करने की बात करें तो हमारे पास एक ऑलरेडी एक इंद्रप्रस्थ पार्क है बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली इंद्रप्रस्थ सिर्फ पार्क बनकर रह गए आज के दिन में तो हो सकता है कि हम वहीं पे फोकस करें मे बी इन पुराना किला और मे बी समथिंग एंड वी कैन एक्चुअली थिंक ऑफ समथिंग ठीक है विच कैन बी वेरी विजुअली अपीलिंग एंड वेरी थॉट प्रोवोकिंग फॉर पीपल हुई वर कम एक प्लीज प्लीज what i was asking you know i got disconnected in between because we had this short uh, you know 30 seconds parkour that happens in our condo and oh. i missed out a bit so i just want to understand one thing uh, uh, what uh, major general bakshi also said was he proposing or someone else said i don't know who was uh, was this proposition there that the central vista be renamed as indraprasth Yes, it is. That's an idea which came up from. Uh, we have been thinking on this idea, and today, uh, Mr. Grover has already taken up this idea, and he suggested that to happen. Okay, Central Vista gets renamed first, yes. and then we move towards the entire city getting renamed. Yes, why not? I mean, that that can be a very good first step. It's genuinely a very good first step. Anybody else? Has anybody sent a question or wants to ask a question? I, I would like to uh, let me let, please please. Ah, sorry, uh, no. I just thought why we uh, quiet here. Yeah, Mr. Grover. Ah, abhi ek vakta ji ne apne kaha tha. Bhaja Shirani ji ne ki museum ka unhone jikar kiya tha. Museum bahut acha ek madhyam ho sakta hai. Vishesh kar usko agar adhunik ka jhum ऑडियो विजुअल टेक्नोलॉजी है हमारी डेवलप हो चुकी है उसको इस्तेमाल करके अगर बनाया जाए सिर्फ वहां पर शिला रख देने से ये हम सभ्यता को डिस्प्ले नहीं कर सकते शॉर्ट में अट्रैक्टिव मैनर में मैंने एक म्यूजियम विजिट किया है डालस में साइंस म्यूजियम जो उसका वे ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन है सो एक्सेलेंट एट यू डोंट है आपको इंटरेस्ट आए, आएगा ही आएगा वहां जाकर उस तरह की टेक्नोलॉजी जब डेवलप हो चुकी है और मैं सोचता हूं कि इस तरह का हम एक प्रोजेक्ट हम कोशिश करें उत्तर प्रदेश में अयोध्या में जो इतना बड़ा विशाल मंदिर निर्माण हो रहा है उसमें एक भारत संस्कृति या भारत दर्शन के नाम से अगर इस संस्कृति को प्रोजेक्ट किया जाए तो बहुत ही सुंदर क्योंकि वहां दुनिया भर के लोग आएंगे वहां पर भारत के लोग भी जाएंगे वहां भारत पर। का भारत का ब्रह्म स्थल तो इंद्रप्रस्थ है ना तो वो तो इंद्रप्रस्थ पे होना चाहिए भारत दर्शन नहीं इंद्रप्रस्थ तो ठीक है मैं इसलिए कह रहा था वो एक कल्चरल सेंटर बन रहा है वहां पर तो वहां भी बन रहा है यहाँ भी बनेगा हाँ यहाँ भी बने लेकिन आवश्यकता इस बात की है की हमें आधुनिक म्यूजियम आधुनिक स्टाइल के म्यूजियम जो है हर सिटी में चाहिए हमारे very true uh, very true but uh, ideally this forum in the when when you say indrapras talks the world listens the this was an initiative to do the same i mean it's a gradual process aur hame lagta hai ke theek hai it's it's like a small you know hum agar expect karte hain ki ek chhota sa seed ek din mein bada ho jayega yeah it is going to become a plant which has been uh, the culture the plant of our culture theek hai which is more than 10000 years old वो एक यही आइडिया वापस फिर से इवॉल्व हो जाएगा इतनी जल्दी इट मे नॉट हैपन दैट्स द रीजन आई बीन ट्राइंग टू आस्क अ क्वेश्चन क्या हाउ वी कैन कनेक्ट आवर यूथ टू इट क्योंकि सी वेन बाई यूर टॉकिंग अबाउट यूथ दे आर आवर फ्यूचर टूमोरो हम लोग हमारा ऑब्जेक्टिव भी होना चाहिए कि कल जो हम लोग हमारा देश या कल्चर उनको देने वाले हैं ठीक है दे आर द वन हुई टू टेक दम फॉरवर्ड सो All the time we have been constantly thinking about how to connect them to our roots. Just yes, ask roots. everybody's views on so that. They can say that's one that. huge uh, inputs which can come from all of you. कि हम अपने यूथ को किस तरह से यहाँ पर इंटीग्रेट कर सकते हैं। दोनों सेंटेंस में सब अपने आइडिया शेयर करो so that we can. And uh, rather we can make them the ambassador of our true culture. मेरा सुझाव है मेरी एक पत्रिका जो उद्योग संचेतना मैंने मेंशन की है उसका मकसद कैरियर से है. कैरियर में सबका इंटरेस्ट है आज के हमारे यूथ का इंटरेस्ट कैरियर में है मैंने कैरियर की बात करता हूं मैं दो चार पृष्ठ की मेरी शॉर्ट मैगजीन है चार पृष्ठ की ऑनलाइन उसमें मैं आखिरी पेज जो है आई डिवोट टू हिस्ट्री हेरिटेज हेल्थ एंड हॉबीज उसमें मैं संक्षेप में एक दो पैरा हर इश्यू में डालने की कोशिश करता हूँ तो आइडिया यह है कि जब वो कैरियर की बात जो पड़ेगा कोई ना कोई तो उसको जाएगा उस पेज के ऊपर इसे शॉर्ट मैगजीन सी अगर आप सिर्फ डेडिकेट करेंगे एक इंडियन कल्चर के लिए तो आप अट्रैक्ट नहीं कर सकते लोगों को 
लेकिन जो आज की जरूरत है जो आज की जो आज की जरूरत है उसकी जरूरत के साथ में अगर कुछ ब्लेंड कर देंगे आप उसको डिफरेंट पॉइंट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट है वो म्यूजिक हो कैर हो या उसके लाइफ स्टाइल हो उनके साथ अगर हम इन चीज को कनेक्ट कर सके तो शायद हम लोग हो सकते हैं काफी हद तक यूथ को ब्लेंड कर ले एनी अदर स्पेसिफिक आइडिया ओजस जी वसुधा जी anybody else online or they have all uh, moved out uh, actually siddharth uh, is there siddharth is there no? siddharth was here in fact this is going to be a very good question for siddharth i think actually, siddharth uh, uh, yeah i can tell you about uh, one project which uh, i have designed it's about delhi heritage park so uh, uh, we have been shown one place in delhi uh, where we have developed uh, the design of the delhi heritage park where we will be showcasing the uh, old tangible and intangible uh, heritage of delhi from abar times or beyond to present day so i think that can be a very good uh, uh, place for youth uh, to interact because it's an interactive kind of a resort with all kinds of modern technologies available so these kind of projects uh, because i am an architect i will say in that manner only so this is my suggestion that if we can uh, do these kind of uh, projects i think the youth will be attracted very easily wait vasudha ji any suggestion from you subhash has gone please aapna wo charge rakhte hai mobile ka wo bhi dikha do abhi yeah yeah ji You have been, you have been saying something. Anybody else? And I you can't hear anybody. RC, you have to say something. Masuda ji was saying something. No, no, no. I was saying nothing concrete as such is coming to my mind at as of now. Okay. Yashwan ji, any idea from you? Any suggestion from you? Uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, i would uh, relate an example of uh, uh, conveying idea through uh, museum audio visuals etc uh, there is a one bharat mata mandir in kutch gujarat and there uh, they have depicted the uh, uh, british history and in that uh, they have uh, projected uh, the role of kranti veer and shanti veer uh, heroes of our uh, indian national movement so kranti veer the garam dal kranti veer and naram dal shanti veer so in written history we have seen the uh, major role of shanti veer but in this uh, audio visual and uh, uh, sculpture and etc they have very beautifully brought out the major role of kranti veer also so when we are talking of museums and audio visuals etc so it should be uh, in all over india and one we museum cannot uh, represent the entire thousands of years of history of india so different period may be devoted Uh, say in one museum at what place different uh, another period in one museum at another place and etc and audio visuals will bring out the uh, idea what we want to bring out to the audience especially our youth very well so, explained very well explained yeah so, so ideally creating more exhibitions exhibit exhibition well and interactive yeah. centers you given a very specific people can example, any, uh, uh, anybody else would like to say something then uh, otherwise rc can uh, can do the concluding part of it anybody else would like to say something is there is siddharth has left so uh, aryan i think uh, let rc do the conclusion i think uh, anybody wants to say i can't see because i'm not able to see this one second 
Sundari wanted to say something. Sundari yes. Bala. Yes. Uh, Sundari I am first time joining this forum. Okay. Thank I'm you. I am from. I just joined the IHR by Dr. Medhi Raja Ji and others. Uh, uh, what I would like to say is that uh, I worked in Delhi for several years. My family belongs to Delhi, though we are from South. Whenever there is any guest coming from to our family to see Delhi, they used to ask one question, is Delhi completely an Islamic country, Islamic architecture? Because I belong to extreme South. And one more point, I'm extremely involved in the Indian culture because I was brought up in Ramakrishna Mission and Shurabindo Ashram schools where we studied foundations of Indian culture when we were 12, 13 years. Not that I'm telling that others should read the same book. So in our course materials also, children never study about the ancient Indian culture in history. My son studied in Kendri Vidyalayas, but still they don't have it. But about the ancient Indian history, very little is touched. A little bit is touched about the Cholas and Pandyas and Pallavas. Later, what surprises me is that my family moved to Singapore and I worked in Singapore and retired. And now I'm staying in Pondicherry last four or five years, working for the India in the light of Sure Window. That is my project that I'm working and people lucky, I'm lucky to join such enlightened groups. So this personal experience that anybody coming to Delhi and you want to show them something and they say, then I took them to Kurukshetra my relatives or friends who come from South, extreme South from Tamil Nadu. So this is what I'm sharing a personal experience that Delhi's original identity has to be restored. Other topics, because the topic is about Indra Prasna. Then I would say them, this was the land when Mahabharata took place. This was this kingdom. In Mahabharata, in the Bhishma Parva, you would find in the 17th skanda of it that 67 kingdoms, 18 mountains, and 27 river ranges are mentioned by Sanjaya. And he narrates to who, which one took which side. And that time, Indraprastha was the kingdom of um, Dharmaraja, the Yudhishthira. And even the, the nest adjacent kingdoms, uh, which were there in Delhi, they were all very highly cultured kingdoms. You suggest the name history is my history. fancy, history is my obsession. Though sorry to say, I'm a software engineer, retired from software, and I, I'm no, a retired from Oracle. support the naming of Indrapras? That is our core uh, thing. Yes, yes. And the, along with that, until they know the sanctity, the value of that name, the people would not cherish it. Otherwise, it will become just like a... I'm not objecting. I'm saying that before that, a lot of groundwork has to be oh, done yes. to educate the people, educate the youth, that why we are naming it Indraprastha, because of its first historical, first kingdom that was established in that jungle, which was a forest cleaned, because I have read several times Mahabharata, Ramayana, right. and now today just I finished my Ishopanishad class. Yes. So I'm deeply we into it after my that, retirement. We are very <laughs> grateful that you could join us and share your views. I and think. because I joined that IHR group, yeah. I would like to also contribute a few, one or two drops of service, if anything to be written. That would be at the South. That's and then second, I think RCG thing. would guide you as to how you can help us as a software engineer to propagate and generate a, a sort of a yeah, Absolutely. I'm a... I retired, I am a Bharat Heavy Electricals, I, my most esteemed company. I was a deputy GIT head of one of the wing. And then later I became a Singapore for 20 years. I was in Singapore. I traveled across uh, all the uh, the I, places I, that I, Yatra that I've done is all the California, Silicon Valley only. Fantastic. Now my Yatra is my Indraprastha, my uh, Hastinapura and Mahabharat, the kingdoms. Yesterday also I sent to several people that whole list, translated list of all the kingdoms. Thank you. And thank then mapped with the modern sorry. map. Thank you. Thank you so very much. So I really cherish to be in this team. Thank you. But what I would request is that if before pre all 
such a scholarly persons, authors on this subject. I am new to this uh, history, historical and literary things. So oh, you can buy my book on Indraprastha. I'll send you the link. You please buy my books uh, on Indraprastha. I have Professor read your Vidhi book Lai. on Indraprastha. Okay, okay, okay. I have already read. I know you, madam. Okay. I really okay. cherish thank your you, thought you. well. I am. Uh, I'm a crazy reader. Thank you. And what I would just as a I'm a senior citizen. So what I would say it is that we have to. Like I go to, before just naming the place, the place people have to understand the history, digest it through museums and various, various suggestions. Then when it comes, you know, you feel, wow, this is ours. Like good. that. Very good suggestion. This is, means educate, pre-homework pre has to be done before that. Thank you very much. Thank I'm very you. fortunate so to become a... Uh, today I attended the entire uh, talk. Aryan, Arshi ko bolo conclusion ke marks thenge because I think I have, right. sorry. Right. Arshi, I think, uh, so today we have an, an extended talk and uh, I think Arshi, please go ahead. Arshi, sign up today so that we can sign up again. It was a beautiful session. I think the whole the whole topic and the fact that we people are coming together to ye wohi ho raha yada yada hi dharma se. Dharm ki baat ho rahi hai और अधर्म के अगेंस्ट में धर्म की फिर से स्थापना करने की बात कर रहे हैं महाभारत भारत को महाभारत करने की बात कर रहे हैं जड़ पे जाने की बात कर रहे हैं आप सभी का इसमें आर्यन नीरा जी ओजस जी जनरल बख्शी जी ऑल दी अदर्स हु ज्वाइंट अस वसुधा कपूर दुग्गल जी सुंदरी जी वीरेंद्र ग्रोवर जी यशवंत कुमार जी ऑल ऑफ यू यू हैव बिन सच अ ग्रेट पार्टिसिपेंट in this discussion there are many more sessions to come um, and uh, we will continue to talk but i would just like to end by saying one thing ki unhone marxist ka aur doins ka theory bataya tha history ke upar to keep it simple itihas wo likhta hai jisko likhna aata hai yahan par jo hum log baithe hain yahan par hamare paas top ke lekhak hain architects hain aur creators hain aryan jaise creators hain jo jo hamari thoughts ko क्रिएट एक क्रिएशन में ला सकते हैं लेट अस ऑल वर्क टुगेदर इन क्रिएटिंग समथिंग दैट फॉर इयोन्स विल बी नोन दिस ग्रुप इज गोइंग टू वर्क टुवर्ड्स दैट मीरा जी यू हैव सेट द स्टोन जस्ट लाइक हिम एंड अब इसके ऊपर क्या इमारत बनती है ओजी क्या इस पे आर्किटेक्चरल चीज करते हैं वो देखना बाकी है और आर्यन जी इसमें दुनिया को किस तरह से इसको दिखाना चाहते हैं वो देखना बाकी है और आप सभी महानुभाव लोग जो इसमें जुड़े हैं आप सबका इसमें क्या क्या आप लोग पिलर्स इसमें खड़े करेंगे वो देखना बाकी है आप सभी का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद बस एक चीज मैं जोड़ूंगा वो ये है कि जब भी हम नीरा जी से बात करते हैं हम मोहित पंख के बारे में बात करते हैं शंखनाथ फॉर इट सो इट वॉज ए शंखनाथ फॉर इंद्रप्रस्थ सो लेट्स बिल्ड द एसेंस ऑफ इंद्रप्रस्थ एंड लेट्स मेक अवर भारत ग्रेटर अवर कल्चर मोर डीपर एंड मोर स्ट्रॉगर जय हिंद जय भारत थैंक यू सो मच वेरी मच बोलो भारत माता की बाय बाय पापा थैंक यू